I'm back again friends. I haven't finished with my message. Yesterday's message I was talking about um, how many people think God has done away with Israel and how because of that Jerusalem is insignificant, the land of Israel or the state of Israel is insignificant to God and therefore um, whatever regarding Israel. I was reading from this book of the Bible in Isaiah and I read it and I, I stopped to think about how the enemy, Satan, the dragon, the serpent is opposing this one of, well, many things he opposes, but this is one thing that he is against and he wants to prevent from happening. Let me take you to Isaiah 49, friends, and I'm going to read, please read this book. It's so wonderful, the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 49, I'm going to read this to you and tell me what you think. Um, from verse 5, And now the Lord says, who formed me from the room to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, so that Israel is gathered to him. For I shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. This is a messianic prophecy. Indeed, he says, verse 6, Is it too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore, to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. This is what the dragon is going to try to oppose in the latter days, the fulfillment of this. Stay with me. Let's continue. Verse 7. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel. Not the Destroyer of Israel. Is that what it says? No, it doesn't. Their Holy One. To him who man despises. To him whom the nation abhors. To the servant of rulers. Kings shall see and arise, princes shall also worship, because the Lord who is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, he has chosen you. Verse 8, thus says the Lord, in an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you, I will preserve you and give you as a covenant to the people to restore the earth to cause them to inherit the desolate heritages, that you may say to the prisoners, go forth to those who are in darkness, show yourselves. I'm going to skip and jump over to verse 14. Bear with me. There's a reason why I'm reading this scripture to you. But this is a good foundation. Verse 14. But Zion has said, the Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Your son shall make haste, your destroyers and those who laid you waste shall go away from you. Lift up your eyes, look around and see all these gathered together and come to you. As I live, says the Lord, you shall surely clothe yourselves with them all as an ornament and bind them anew as a bride does. For your waste and desolate places and the land of your destruction will even now be too small for the inhabitants. And those who swallowed you up will be far away. This is the surrounding nations surrounding Israel, Jerusalem. The children you will have after the ones you have lost will say again in your ears, the place is too small for me. Give me a place where I may dwell. Then you will say in your heart, who has begotten these for me since I have lost my children and am desolate? 
a captive and wandering to and fro. Who has brought these up? There I was, left alone, but these, where were they? Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up my hand in an oath to the nations, and set up my standard for the peoples. They shall bring your sons in their arms, and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Kings shall be your foster fathers, and their queens your nursing mothers. They shall bow down to you with their faces to the earth, and lick up the dust of your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord. They shall not be ashamed who wait for me. Christian Zionism and believers who really look forward to the saving of the whole of Israel and the coming of the Messiah understand these scriptures really well. They understand that, of course, the Lord is going to redeem Israel. So why is Christian Zionism a problem? What ought to be the problem is the Islamic expansionist Khilafa vision that they have. That should be the problem, should it not? The Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Who made it famous? Who does the Temple Mount really belong to? The Jews, right? Yet the Jews cannot even go anywhere near that place without another intifada kicking off. Islam is here to abrogate, subjugate and dominate within that region. And they're not satisfied with that because it is an expansionist system. It's here to conquer, to dominate, to subjugate. Why is that not a problem? And why is Christian Zionism a problem? People say that all oh, Israel has this secret vision for greater Israel. This is why they conspire and instigate trouble within the region, that Israel wants trouble so it can take more land. Yet Islam is doing it blatantly, declares it wants jihad. Read the um, charter of Hamas. Listen to the sermons on in Fridays from um, the country of Iran. The Muslim Brotherhood, they don't hide their agenda. They make it open and they make it plain. They use our democracy to come in and infiltrate and gain power. Now this isn't fear mongering. This is not bashing Muslims. These are just facts. It's there, you can do your research. It's all there for you to see. Why is that not a problem and yet Christian Zionism is a problem? And what is Zionism really? To believe that the Jews have a right to their homeland? So they can go and be at home in their own homeland? To support that vision? What difference does it make? Either we do that support now or we do it when the Lord Jesus returns because he is going to gather them back into the land and sanctify the land, cleanse the land. My cat Fifi is at the door, she wants to come in. I want to leave you with another scripture, it's in um, the book of Revelation chapter 12. And this is what the dragon is going to do when he's cast out of heaven. He goes straight after the woman and her offspring. I wonder why. Verse 13, this is from Revelation chapter 12. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman, Israel, who gave birth to the male child, Jesus. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place for refuge, right? Where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time, three and a half years. This is Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation when Israel goes into captivity again. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might 
cause her to be carried away by the flood. And I said this in another video of mine, that I believe this flood that the dragon uses as water to spew out after the woman, because he's enraged against her that she's been helped. She's been given refuge in the wilderness and he's he's really mad at her. So he sends a flood to go after her. And I believe that flood is the flood of immigration. Just like what um, Erdogan is doing right now, threatening Greece and Europe with the um, the refugees, the Syrian refugees. He's sending them over like a flood. And this is what I believe I could be wrong, but this is how it makes sense to me now. Like, how is this actually going to happen? Is it literally an ocean that's going to go after Israel when she's helped in the wilderness? Meaning the nations will help her, offer her asylum, take her in. Because they're going to be attacked. Israel's going to be attacked, you guys. And the thing is, they're going to be so confident in their military power like they have done in the past. We know the miracles of the various wars that Israel has fought in order to preserve its its sovereignty in the region. We understand that God has preserved them. But there is coming a time with that confidence, if you like, that they have in the IDF. It's, it's going to be shaken, you guys. They're going to have to be dependent on the Lord. And this is all part of his plan. They're going to call upon him, Jesus. And he will listen and he will come for them. Meanwhile, let me go back. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, verse 15, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman. The earth is helping Israel. Remember, she's gone into captivity again. The dragon is after her, persecuting Israel. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring. Who are they? Who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The dragon goes after the Jews and the Christians. Israel and the ones who believe in the Messiah. And the ones who are helping the woman, Israel, he goes after the Christian Zionists. That's what that is telling me. Now, it's got a bad, it's got a bad name, Christian Zionism. There's all sorts of connotations attached to that terminology. I'm, I'm aware of it. But I'm reading you the scripture and I would like you to show me what does that mean to you? That when things get really heated up, when Israel is surrounded, Jerusalem is surrounded by armies, all these people that come against Israel and say it's the Zionist agenda behind all this, it's a Masonic plot, where are you going to be when Israel is surrounded, Jerusalem is surrounded? Are you going to be cheering on their enemies or are you going to be praying and interceding for them? Are you going to offer a hand to help them? I wonder what the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, would think about that. I think he's going to take it very personally. Abrogation, replacement, supersessionist, Islam. That is not a problem, is it? Christian Zionism is a problem, apparently. In Isaiah 49, in the Messianic prophecy, it's an amazing promise given to Jacob, to Israel, and to the Gentiles. And it's in relation to the land, the geographic location. And why does Islam want claim over this land? Why can't they be satisfied with the land that they already have? Twelve princes... God had blessed Ishmael. They're not satisfied. Edom wants all of Israel. They are the ones who want greater Islamic state. Israel calls itself the Jewish state and that's a problem. But we have all these Islamic states and that is not a problem. 
When the time comes when Jacob's trouble does arrive and this persecution of the dragon going after the woman and her offspring, our friends are going to be few within the Christian circles, you guys. These people are sellouts. They're Islamist apologists. They are Palestinian sympathizers. So don't get me wrong. There is genuine mistreatment and abuse taking place within the Palestinian um, camps within their own people. What Hamas do, what the Palestinian, what the PA do to their own people, absolutely. But for those of you who know what I'm talking about and know me, you under you'll understand what I mean by that. Why does Islam want the land? Why was Muhammad so keen on trying to convince the Jews that he is their prophet? Going back to our books, the Holy Bible, to try to convince them that he's just another prophet? Why was he so insistent on proving to the Jews that he should be welcomed and accepted by the Jewish community in Mecca? Well, now we know it was Petra. Because Islam is here to take over Christianity, to take over the promises of God. He, the God, the promises that God has made, the covenants. Islam here is to abrogate the whole thing, you guys. To cancel it. But that's not a problem. Christian Zionism is a problem. They want to replace the Temple Mount with the Mecca style worship center. They've already got the Dome of the Rock, Al Aqsa, they are dominating the region. Temple Mount, there's no temple there. They've desecrated it, it's already been desecrated. And I'll, I'll go back to reminding you what it says in the Book of Romans about this blindness in part that has happened to Israel. Blindness in part for a reason. Romans chapter 11. And when you have time, friends, please read Romans chapters 9, 10 and 11. Read, the, read it in that order. Romans chapter 11. Verse 25. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved, as it is written. Look at this. He goes back and he refers to the book of, let's see, to the book of Isaiah, <laughs> chapter 58. The Deliverer will come out of Zion and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Yeah, they're ungodly right now. God knows. The Word of God is clearly written down here that God is the one who will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Verse 27. For this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Verse 28. Concerning the gospel, there are enemies for your sake. But concerning the election, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For as you were once disobedient to God, yet now have obtained mercy through their disobedience, even so these also have now been disobedient that through the mercy shown you, they also may obtain mercy. Remember, to the Jew first and then the Greek. For God has committed them all to disobedience, that he might have mercy on all. Verse 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become his counsellor, 
or who has first given to him and it shall be repaid to him for of him and through him and to him we are all things to him are all things to whom be glory for ever amen god is not done with israel and he is not done with his enemies either I think the times are going to become so polarizing, you guys, that people are really going to have to choose what side they're on. And I know those are very divisive words, but to be honest, the Bible is very divisive. There isn't a gray area. It's pretty much black and white. Next time I do video, I'd like to talk to you, friends, about the book of Genesis and I'm going to go back because I'm not done with this subject I want I want to really hone in on this issue with Israel and why does Islam think it has a right to the land it's much deeper than than you and I think it's spiritual remember but I want to show you that in the book of Genesis it tells us why and uh, how serious this situation is it's not a joke so don't take it lightly it's very serious and it, it should concern us it should concern us all the very thing that Jesus said to Jerusalem when he said Jerusalem Jerusalem you know you didn't accept me you didn't know the time of your visitation now look your house is left to you desolate and many years later the temple is destroyed and you know about the whole story of Israel, what happened to the people of Israel. But Jesus said they're not going to see him again until they say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So he has put the indicator right there that they will not see him again until. So that until is coming. So we need to be prepared and know what to prepare for. So nothing takes us by surprise. And also, it's important to know these scriptures because when there's so much misinformation and much of it is disinformation, pur purposefully um, informing people incorrectly, they're very deceptive with their information and we need to always take it and compare it to the Bible and see if it's legit. If it makes sense scripturally, otherwise, you know, even we can be deceived, you guys. When the false prophet and the Antichrist show up, there's going to be lots of signs and wonders. That is another, yet another thing to happen. That deception is going to be so bad. We need to know, we need to be aware. And um, I hope you enjoyed this message. I hope you enjoyed it. Please look forward to my next message. It's going to be regarding the book of Genesis and regarding the land of Israel. And I'm going to talk about how Islam is the vehicle that is going to be here in the last days. And Jesus Christ is going to confront it and destroy it completely. I know many people think that Islam is just going to destroy itself because they have this infighting. No, not according to the Bible. To a degree, it's going to be more fractioned and unified and then fractioned again because it's going to have a lot of infighting. But it's not going to be totally destroyed. No, Satan has set this thing up as a vehicle. He's using it for a reason. Remember yesterday I said he needs an army and they are breeding an army for a reason. Jesus Christ is going to come and destroy them. That's why this is serious. I don't take this lightly, you guys. This is really hard for me. My family are Muslim. My mum and dad are Muslim. How are they going to feel listening to me talk about Islam's going to be destroyed by Jesus Christ, right? I don't take this lightly. This is serious. So, anyway, I hope you understand. I'll speak to you soon and um, let me know what you think. Leave a comment. Thank you so much, friends.